Back over from, from Johnson. Sorry. They let me join the association anyway, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's free. It's so they're close to me. But I got to meet Mr. Tasso and last year and his family. Um, and what an extraordinary man. Um, to hear what he talked about and how long he and was dedicated to ALJ and the time that he spent at ALJ. Uh, you know, Mr. Barry Allen said he had it in school. Everybody, everybody knew his name after I got home or back to school talking about it. And um, this year, our distinguished faculty member is Mr. Robert Pastor. Pastor, uh, grew up in Lincoln, graduated in 1941. Um, during World War II, he served in the Coast Guard in both the Pacific and the Atlantic. Uh, while in the Coast Guard, he attended the Coast Guard Academy, achieving the rank of ensign. In 1943, he married his high school sweetheart, Edna Stewart, also a high graduate. They had been married for 72 years. <laughs> that they moved in in 1945. They raised two children, Rob and Valerie, who both graduated from ALJ. After World War II, Mr. Kastler had a printing business um, with a friend in Linden, in York, where they did work for the government. When the contract ended, they closed the business. Uh, he then sold Hoover vacuums door to door, went to Rutgers University Night School in New Brunswick for eight years. He obtained his BA in 1954 and began his teaching career at his alma mater, Linden High School. In 1958, the Union County Regional Superintendent liked Mr. Kastner's business experience and hired him for a state-funded distributed education program. He taught two regular classes and two distributed education classes in the morning. He then had to procure, procure jobs for students at various businesses and supervise them as well. One former student tells him he still works at a job he got her during his program. He started a Decker Club as an adjunct to the Distributed Education Program, and this club is still thriving today. And we have another former Decker uh, person that follows you, correct? Mr. Jack Ford is here today, too, and he, he followed him. And you saw the person that followed then, Mr. Kenyon, the big bear looking guy with the beard that was on the video. That is our new Decker person. So Decker is still thriving today after all this time, it's because of you and your efforts. So thank you. Mr. Castor uh, retired teaching in 1984, but he remains active, keeping in touch with his former teachers and colleagues, with his wife. Um, he's very active in his church, Reformed Church in Linden, and uh, he's with his grandchildren and five great grandchildren, all living in the area, and they keep him busy. So, congratulations. <laughs> Before I start, I'd like you to invite two tables over here to stand up just for a moment. <laughs> if you want to fill up, fill up a room, invite the cast up there. <laughs> All my children, grandchildren, and spouses, and I'm happy they came. I'd like to say thank you to the association for depicting me as the what do I, distinguished, as they call it, faculty for this year. You know, when I first heard this, I was a little bit surprised because I started teaching 60 years ago, and next month I will be retired 30 years. <laughs> and I thought, if I ever did anything good in school, they have long forgotten it. <laughs> but I'm glad to say I guess they did not. So I appreciate that. I'm also honored because I am the first classroom teacher to be selected for the Hall of Fame. And I feel that tonight I'm representing a lot of good, dedicated teachers been in the classroom in the school many years, too many of you, with little recognition by the community. 
But they did their job trying to impart knowledge and a skill to the students, trying to help them in their future life. And I believe that they all deserve an accolade. Now, it all started with me back in the 1950s. Uh, I was teaching in Linden High School, social business subjects, and I met Dr. Davis, superintendent of the regional district. I found out that he was very much in favor of vocational education as I was. Linden was not interested, but Dr. Davis, like my experience in business and military and teaching, and so he hired me. I came to Clark and I organized and started and taught the first vocational program in Clark. That was long before there was a Union County Technical School and other work programs, vocational programs that came along in our school came later, like auto shop and beauty culture. But I would like to say that Jack Ford's help after I left the Decker program is still going on where beauty culture and auto mechanics are taken over by the vocational high school in Scotch Plains. So we can be proud of that part of it. I taught four classes in the morning to a group of seniors, 25 or 30 at a time. And I taught such things as marketing, salesmanship, business management, and that type of thing. At no time, the, the, the students were dismissed from school. And they went out to jobs, to employers in the vicinity, that I had obtained for them. Now, I got a job for a student. I indicated it and decided and made the employer realize, you are not just getting inexpensive part-time help. You were to be part of this program and you would teach that student the basics of your business and come to our school and help out whenever necessary. And they agreed to do that, and I put them in jobs all around here. And I must say, one of the things Dr. Davis was concerned about was the fact that some of the senior students who did not go to college were very disinterested in the education, and he was worried about the dropout rate. And I have to brag a moment and say, this program saved a lot of kids from dropping out of school because when they worked and they saw some value to education, they became interested. And over the years, I've met students who said, you know, that program turned my self around and I decided to go on for education. Just two weeks ago, the A&P had fellow stopped me and told me he was, had been in my program. And that after he got out, he thought about it and he decided to go to college, and he's now a lawyer in North Jersey. So those kind of things help a teacher to really feel maybe they did something worthwhile. Now, education is an honorable thing in my family. I show you these people that do take. Besides me, my wife here put piano in a music studio and at home for 50 years. Some of you may have had it. <laughs> There's been a lot of good things out of this gal's music knowledge. And Rob, our son, is a retired executive at educational uh, testing service in Princeton. And they are the makers of that SAT test. <laughs> 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 our daughter in law, or rather, excuse me, guys, our daughter, Valerie, is sitting over there, who some of you might remember was always on the stage in our program, <laughs> and still sings. She's a retired teacher from the Woodridge District where she taught English and Dramatics. One of her students is a Jersey boy on the Broadway production. And he had his first dramatic lesson with that. He was proud of that. Our daughter in law, Linda Heinzfeld, her hair was her maiden name, 
Clark and Clark in the high school for five years. And probably one of the best things I ever did that is not in my teaching career. I introduced her to our son. <laughs> After teaching at Clark, she had just retired from a, a high school in South Jersey. I got grandchildren here, her teachers and spouses, teaching uh, Westfield, East Brunswick, a charter school in Philadelphia, so that education is quite well worth in our particular family. Now I'm going to end with a question and a personal observation. Did you know that William Shakespeare played football? <laughs> well, he did. My wife's cousin, William Shakespeare, was an all-American pastor. It is, it's If you want to look him up on the internet, he's in the College Football Hall of Fame. He's in the Notre Dame Hall of Fame for several reasons. He still holds the Notre Dame record for the longest kick in Notre Dame history. He kicked a 86-yard punt against the University of Pittsburgh in 1935, 70 yards in the air. It's still a record at Notre Dame. And just to, to prove that it wasn't a fluke, the next week he kicked a 75-yarder against Navy. Now, in 1969, they celebrate the 100th year of college football. Sports writers of the United States were asked, what was the most exciting game in the first 100 years of college football? And unanimously, they picked the game between Ohio State and Notre Dame. Ohio State was undefeated. They played Notre Dame at Ohio State before 81,000 fans. They were heavily paid. Ohio State led throughout the whole game 13 0. In the last five or six minutes of the last quarter, Notre Dame scored two touchdowns to make the game 13 to 12. As the clock was winding down in the last few seconds of the game, William Shakespeare <laughs> threw the winning touchdown pass that defeated Ohio State and broke the hearts of the whole state. <laughs> now, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he decided to go into the business world. And later on, he became a, a CEO and president of a very large manufacturing company in Ohio. During World War II, he became a captain. And at the Battle of the Bulge, he was a pilot captured a German officer who had plans on him to assassinate General Eisenhower. So he has a fistful of medals and so forth. Quite a guy. But now for my personal <laughs> From now on, when I go to something at a gathering, I can brag that I also am in the Hall of Fame. I'm along with William Shakespeare. <laughs> I landed two-year-old man standing up here before you. Thank you.